Hello students, in the last episode we could learn some of the special purpose finishes that alter the appearance and uh, giving the fabrics easy care properties and also stabilization of the fabrics. Today we will see how the fabrics can be made more comfortable and uh, more uh, biologically resistant and also uh, how they can be made into safety garments to the wearer. Now we will look at comfort related finishes. Comfort is the main factor uh, for apparel fabrics as it influences the efficiency of the wearer as it provides a congenial environment to work with. Comfort is generally associated with moisture and also the thermal properties of the fabrics. These finishes either improve the moisture relations or otherwise they also improve the thermal stability or thermal resistance of the fabrics and thus they can provide the comfort. And the finishes that uh, improve the moisture repellency or you know water repellent finishes and also water proof finishes and also uh, for uh, synthetic fibers and all we need finishes which should become hydrophilic that means that they should be able to provide more comfort by absorbing more water and the finishes that alter the thermal related properties or napping and brushing which were already dealt you know in the last episodes. Coming to the moisture related finishes, fabrics interact with water in different ways. The water may be absorbed or adsorbed or transported or repelled. The moisture related properties are based on the polymer and also its arrangement and its orientation. Natural fibers are generally more absorbent and because their polymer structure is such that you know, absorption of the water. But if you take synthetic fibers, they are generally manufactured with uh, different levels of moisture content in them and based on the end use. Coming to the water repellent finishes. Water repellent finishes are those that are given to fabrics to alter the surface properties in order to repel water. So, a water repellent fabric resists wetting, but if the water comes with certain force, it will penetrate the fabric. So, water repellency is dependent uh, on the surface tension and permeability which can be achieved by finishing or by having uh, I mean uh, very closer fabric construction. Water beads up on the fabric that has been finished with water repellent material. The finish also prevents the spreading of uh, penetrating the water into the fabric and because it increases the interfacial tension between the fabric surface and water. Fabric must be closely constructed in order to be a better or effective water repellent. Water repellents are hydrophobic materials and ke or chemicals that form hydrophobic films on the surface of the fibers. They do not fill the interstices, but you know the air permeability of the fabric is not altered and therefore the fabrics are sometimes referred as breathable fabrics. It does not alter even the handle of the fabrics. And the five main types of water repellent chemicals differ in their cost, their longevity and a washing and dry cleaning and range of fibers and fabrics on which they can be applied successfully and uh, simultaneous enhancement of oil repellency. So, depending upon all these factors, you know the uh, different types of chemicals that are available in the market today can be applied on materials. The first one is the wax emulsion water repellents. These are the least expensive hydrophobic chemicals, but they give excellent water repellency particularly in close structured cellulosic fabrics. They are not durable either, but you know under washing or a dry cleaning. So, after several cleanings, it must be treated again or replenished you know in order to provide the water repellency. Solvent uh, soluble wax emulsions are also used by the dry cleaners to restore the finish 
they are available in spray form so that they can spray on the fabric and then make it water repellent. And the second a group of chemicals are uh, pyridinum based water repellents. They are long chain fatty amides and the wax resin mixtures. They are durable under washing and dry cleaning in hydrocarbon solvents. And the third group of chemicals that are silicon water repellents. They can be applied to a widest range of fabrics, especially suited to filament fabrics. They are also excellent on wool and wool blended fabrics. A high degree of water repellency is achieved and is durable under washing and dry cleaning. These repellents are also applied to on cellulosic fabrics providing a degree of water repellency equivalent to that of uh, wax emulsions can be provided. The silicon treatment is more expensive when compared to other uh, chemicals. Organic chromium water repellents are the other group. They are excellent for synthetic fabrics and uh, give good results on wool also. They have good longevity under dry cleaning and moderate longevity under washing. And another group of chemicals is fluorocarbon or fluorochemicals. They are the water repellents that are being used on many fabrics today. They are unique in that they confer some oil repellency also along with the water repellency. Let us learn about waterproof finishes. Waterproof finishes are those that coat or seal the fabrics so that water cannot pass through the fabrics. They become impermeable even to the air and thus it becomes very uncomfortable to the wearer. So rubber coating was used earlier and we just because it is very heavy and it used to crackle with age, now it is not being used for waterproofing. So the materials that are used for waterproofing may be vinyl resins, and uh, other things that do not oxidize and crack as readily as rubber are being used today. Different processes of uh, waterproofing are in vogue. The popular methods you know, of waterproofing uh, include application on any finished fabric. You now the finished fabrics become impervious to water, wind, moths, milieu and resistant to acids, grease, sunlight, perspiration and stains. The polyvinyl resins or polyacrylic resins provide tough stretchable plastic coating on the fabric. So the, you can see that the fabric alters the handle and thus the fabric cannot have its own uh, pliable handle which was there in the beginning. And the differences between actually water repellent and water proofing fabrics or you know in case of waterproofing generally the fabric is having low count whereas in a water repellent fabric the it contains high count so it is a closely woven and in case of waterproofing it is loosely woven because it is anyhow being coated with some chemical and uh, in waterproof fabric water cannot penetrate and at the same time air also cannot be permitted through the fabric whereas in water repellent fabrics water drops beat up on the surface but with certain force the water enters through the uh, fabric and at same time the air permeability is not being affected because the finish does not uh, you know close the interstices of the fabric and then the handle of the waterproof fabrics are altered whereas the handle of the water repellent fabrics are not altered because it's a just an ultra film that is coming on the fabric, it does not alter the handle at all. The waterproofing is cheaper to produce and whereas uh, the water repellency is a little costlier but it depends upon again the durability or the permanence of the uh, finish. And generally uh, waterproofing is almost permanent and whereas this one uh, water repellent finishes can be temporary can be semi durable or durable depending upon the end use and the cost of finishing. Let us look at hydrophilic finishes and hydrophobic fibers such as nylon and polyester are finished by using this kind of finishes. The finished fabrics exhibit enhanced wicking 
of water over their surfaces through their thickness and also through uh, the surface. So, both the sides, the horizontal and vertical uh, wickability is improved by this process. When placed in water, you know, these fabrics become more wetter and than unfinished fabrics. So, hydrophilic finished fabrics are often used in exercise garments as they provide better comfort by transporting away the sweat that is uh, being produced from the body of the wearer. Polyester may be made hydrophilic by surface modification using sodium hydroxide solution. Now, this is treated with a higher concentration of uh, sodium hydroxide, so that the surface of the fiber uh, gets degradation and thus it becomes uh, the part of the polymer will being removed from the surface. Then this particular fabric when it is washed and it provides surface wherein the molecular uh, groups which are helpful in absorbing the moisture will be uh, exposed thus the fabric becomes more hydrophilic. And uh, by this finish the polyester fabrics have improved the handle and drape and they are less likely to pill and may have improved soil release properties, uh, reduced static buildup and also have reduced the tendency to cling when wet. Natural fibers generally have very good uh, uh, hydrophilicity so that they can absorb the water and all. But uh, what happens is sometimes when some chemical treatments are given, the fabrics become less absorbent. So, moisturization is the only process that can help in improving the absorbency of especially cotton fabrics. Other fabrics you know like uh, wool and silk and other fabrics do not require any treatments because they are already uh, you know hydrophilic in nature. Now, we will look at biological control finishes. Fabrics exposed to surrounding environment are prone to damage by insects, moths, mold and mildew and also microbial attacks besides UV rays. Generally, insect and moth repellent uh, finishes are required for wool and uh, uh, woolen fabrics and wool blended fabrics. The finishes may repel or kill the moth or you know make the uh, fiber or the fabric unpalatable to the insects. Permethrin is usually applied for uh, fabrics that are meant for making tents and canvas for outdoor applications. Certain chemical compounds are capable of controlling the milieu, you know they are aqueous phenyl, mercuric acetate, some organo metallic compounds such as tin and copper etcetera. Then coming to antimicrobial finishes, this have become very important today because there are lot of uh, diseases are seen around and also infections are seen and after the injuries and all. And so, uh, these finishes are mainly given to control the spread of the disease and reduce the danger of infection following the injury and also to help uh, to inhibit the development of unpleasant odors from perspiration and other soil that is present in the cloth and then reduce the damage to fabrics from milieu producing fungi and also rot producing bacteria. Producing fabrics with excellent antimicrobial qualities are known to ancient Egyptians. It is as it is evident from the you know fabric that is being wrapped around the mummies uh, several thousand years ago. And some of the organic extracts taken from the plants are also known antimicrobial uh, agents. So, antimicrobial finishes and fabrics put to various uh, end uses have started in 1900s. Antimicrobial agents can act in two ways, one is by contact that means that the antimicrobial agent inhibits microbes only on the fiber surface by contact and uh, another method is by diffusion that is the antimicrobial agent is slowly released from the surface of the fi fibers and thus they provide protection against this bacteria and other things. 
the antimicrobial agents can be applied to the textile surfaces by exhaust or pad dry cure methods or by coating or by spray and foam techniques. The substances could also be applied by directly adding it into uh, fibers dope in case of synthetics and man made fibers wherein it forms a part of the uh, fiber polymer system. A number of uh, chemicals have been employed to impart antimicrobial activity to textile materials. These chemicals include inorganic salts, organometallics, indophores, also phenols and uh, thiophenols, antibiotics, heterocyclics with the anionic groups, nitro compounds, urea, formaldehyde, derivatives and amines. Many of these chemicals however are toxic and may be little carcinogenic and uh, so they are uh, cannot be used on the fabrics and so their uh, uh, use on the fabrics are limited. You know the fabrics that are being used on uh, for uh, apparels and all these chemicals cannot be employed. Some of the most recent developments in antimicrobial treatments of textiles or use of various active agents such as silver, quaternary ammonium salts, polyhexamethylene bigonide and triclosan, chitosan dyes and uh, peroxy acids. So, the durability of the finished washing is the main concern in most of the commercially antimicrobial finished fabrics and also due to the advancement in uh, nanotechnology you can find that most of the these chemicals are made in nano form and applied and thus they give an ultra uh, thin layer on the fabric and which can uh, improve the efficiency of these antimicrobial finishes on the materials. Not only the chemicals but also the herbal nano finishes are seen today and which are more effective and which are also uh, you know durable to washing and dry cleaning. Let us look at safety related finishes. The functional finishes that produce safety environment are grouped under safety related finishes. Under that the first one that comes is the flame retardant finishes. Fibers used for textiles vary in their flammability and natural fibers such as cellulosics you know or they burn uh, rapidly and when they are uh, ignited and they continue to burn even after removal and also they leave the after glow. And uh, whereas in case of uh, protein fibers like silk and wool, uh, they do not ignite so easily but burn slowly and but they are self extinguishing because their polymer st structure you know does not uh, support the combustion. Whereas in cellulosic because of the presence of oxygen over there and it continues to do to burn. This afterglow in case of uh, uh, cotton and cellulosic fibers is sometimes dangerous as it may reignite the fibers if placed in a mass. Synthetic fibers you know melt rather than burn when ignited as the fibers are thermoplastic in nature. Hot molten solution that comes out of these materials will be much more dangerous because they burn the uh, you know skin and so they are dangerous to the uh, people when they are worn. As the cellulosics are highly inflammable, efforts were made to make them resistant to flame especially for children's garments and sheets by way of finishing with flame retarding chemicals. These finishers produce fabrics with reduced burning behavior. Flame retardants is the resistance to combustion of a material when tested under specific conditions. Flame resistance is the property of a material whereby flaming combustion is prevented, terminated or inhibited following application of a flaming or non-flaming source of ignition with or without subsequent removal of the ignition source. The term flame proofing denotes that the fabric is made totally fireproof and it is not affected by 
the fire. Many chemical combinations were developed to control the flammability of the fabrics, especially in 1970s and making children's clothing and sleepwear uh, definitely flame resistant and it became a law at that time. But during 1980s, it was found that some of the chemicals used for flame retardancy, you know, they are carcinogenic and so the fabrics were withdrawn from the market thinking that they are dangerous to the people who are worn, especially for the children. At present, uh, three approaches are being considered for achieving flame retardancy in fabrics. One approach is that using the fibers which are having inherent flame retardancy and such as asbestos which is a natural fiber and manufactured fibers like glass and uh, we have uh, aramids, moda acrylics, vignon and all these fibers are having flame retardant and so they can be used as such for making of fabrics which are used near the fires and such related uh, uh, end uses. And then second approach is using fiber modifications. That means that the fibers are modified in order to provide the fire retardancy and such as rayons, modified rayons, modified nylons and modified uh, polyesters. Rayon, you know, regenerated cellulosic fiber burns uh, very uh, quickly and thus it is very dangerous when it is used for the children's garments and all. So, compulsorily this fabric needs to be given this kind of finish so that uh, there will be a lot of safety when worn by the children. Otherwise, the fabric is a very good fabric and very supple fabric and uh, it has a very good handle. A third approach is that, uh, you know, that uh, giving a finish to the fabric, maybe it is a cellulosic fabric or it is a, a rayon or a cotton fabric or wool or silk or any other fabrics. Basically, wool and uh, silk are having uh, fire retardancy and but other fabrics generally are given this kind of finishes. Several chemical compounds used for frame retardancy are invoked today and uh, they are that is THPC, it is popularly known as that is tetrachris hydroxymethyl phosphonium chloride and also tetrachris hydroxy methyl phosphonium hydroxide and vinyl phosphate esters etc. These are the chemicals that are being used in order to provide flame retardancy in fabrics. The fabrics are impregnated with these chemicals and uh, uh, sometimes cured if it is required. And some of these chemicals may alter the fabric handle especially by making them little stiffer and harsh. And uh, sometimes you know the finish uh, chemical may also break down during the washing and dry cleaning and so it should be selected based on the fabric and based on the end use whether it is being washed regularly or dry cleaned regularly or it is not washed and uh, uh, dry cleaned that often. Another safety related finishes are anti-static finishes. Generally when fabrics are rubbed against themselves or against some other surface, they produce the electricity. In case of hydrophilic fibers such as natural fibers, you know, they are capable of dissipating the electricity that is produced into the environment because they are polar. And in case of hydrophobic surfaces or hydrophobic for, uh, fibers such as nylons, polyesters and all, they cannot dissipate the electricity that is being produced and so it becomes static on the surface of the fabrics and so this becomes a problem in usage and even while stitching you know the fabric sticks to the uh, you know sewing equipment and also when worn it sticks onto the body of the wearer and so this static electricity should be removed and also there is a danger with this electricity because uh, when these fabrics are worn in uh, uh, rooms where oxygen is in use like such as operation theatres and all, sparks that are being produced through uh, this uh, static electricity may cause fire accidents. And so, it is dangerous to use these fabrics in places where oxygen is in use and that is why even the nurses uniforms, the nurses even the socks and all are uh, going to be in cotton, but if they are to be used, you know they should be. Uh, in case of uh, polyesters and nylons, if they have to be used, you know, they should be given this kind of uh, 
uh, antistatic finish. Antistatic finishes may be given in two ways. One is by finishing uh, with the chemicals such as uh, quaternary ammonium salts or other hygroscopic compounds. Adding these chemicals in the dope solution when these fibers are being manufactured. And another uh, advanced methods are coming up today that is uh, the fabrics are given a film with uh, hydrophilic material an ultra film that is uh, made up or developed on the fabric using nanotechnology can really produce uh, fabrics uh, with the uh, you know, capability of dissipating the electricity into the environment and thus we can make these fabrics more anti-static. Thus we have seen all uh, special purpose finishes that will provide not only the comfort but also uh, having biological control as well as that provides safety to the wearer. So all these special purpose finishes are uh, uh, actually given to those fabrics which are going to be used for that particular purpose and especially for the functional garments. So ordinary fabrics may have some of these qualities but you know these should be enhanced in the fabrics that are going to be used for the functional garments.